I'm talking to Rocky Howard. Rocky, I'm so excited to have you on She Can. Tell us a bit more about yourself and what you do. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much. I love the work that you're doing and I love the the whole idea of She Can. I, I certainly believe that She Can. Um, my name is Rocky Howard. I identify as she, her, Black, Christian, Gen X, wife and mom. Um, I serve in a lot of places in my life, starting with I am the Chief Equity and Impact Officer at the MOM Project. If your audience is not familiar, quite simply, the MOM Project is here to create economic opportunity for moms and to, to connect moms with organizations who want to make space for the way that moms want to work. We also have our work labs division, which is a research division that also helps companies build more inclusive and uh, respectful cultures for dual working moms and really kind of the heart of of of. Uh, our ecosystem right now for me is our nonprofit division momproject.org and rise where we are. Um, we have a scholarship program that helps upskill women and particularly moms and moms of color to help them create more economic opportunity. We've just released our impact report and we recognize that for every graduate in our program who goes out and finds work, we add about a million dollars of economic opportunity when you look over the lifetime of their career. Um, I Yes, for sure. Personally, I am a, uh, a woman whose life has changed, and I'm sure we'll talk about that because I was given economic opportunity um, and access to it. And so my kids live a very different life than I lived because of that. Um, when I am not working with our clients, and potential clients to help them understand how the mom project can help support their diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging needs and how we can partner to do that. Um, I have a couple of other initiatives that I am involved in. Um, I am the creator of the, um, the, the Grown Woman Life platform. We do Grown Woman Wednesdays every Wednesday on LinkedIn Live at 1 p.m. where we amplify the voices of women in the hopes of powering the proud and purposeful and unapologetic careers of grown women. Um, I do quite a bit of mentorship. I'm also very honored to be part of advisory boards for both Wedge HR, which is a video HR firm and um, for my friend Sharon and the folks over at Informed Decisions. Um, and they are doing great work in the diversity space by helping to identify biases in the interview process real time. Um, I The most important job that I do as a dual working mom is I am very lucky to be a wife and married to the love of my life for almost 32 years and to be a mom of four. I have kids that are, uh, a couple of them are what I call baby adults. They're 21 and 23. And my oldest two girls are, are 32 and 31. I have to remember when the birthdays are, what month is it? So that's, <laughs> that's who I am. Amazing, Rocky. I love listening to you because you really have um, forged an incredible career for yourself in a space that is very important, very interesting, and you're of so much service in so many different ways. So thank you for that, first of all. Rocky, tell us a little bit about your journey. How did you get to this point where you have, you bring so much to the table in so many different ways? Yeah, it's an interesting question because I think we have this assumption that someone is young and they're in perfect circumstances and they know what they want to be when they grow up and then they go to school and they graduate and they go on this very linear path up. And that's just not my story. And it's not most of our stories. Um, quite honestly, I was pregnant with my oldest daughter. I'd been in retail. Um, I was in a high crime neighborhood. The store that I worked at was robbed for the fifth time at gunpoint when I was pregnant with my daughter. And uh, my now husband said, yeah, like, that's not going to work. 
you, why don't you just go sit down, <laughs> wait for this baby to come. And, uh, you know, that's a privilege that not a lot of people have. Um, that's not in my nature to kind of go sit down. And so I went to a temp service going, yeah, I'm pregnant. I am, uh, relocating in a couple months, but I need something to do. Do you all have something that'll keep me busy? Um, and they said, you know what? Interesting. Like we need a fill-in receptionist. Would you like to do that job? Um, and I got introduced to this whole industry of recruiting. And I thought, wow, this is pretty powerful. Like I can talk to people, something I love to do and help people, something I love to do all day long, but this is pretty cool. And so I think the story behind that is sometimes it's the small moments that we don't realize that are gonna change our lives that absolutely change the trajectory of our life. And I am an unapologetic God girl. I believe that there are no mistakes and I was put in that position because it's at the stage for the rest of my career. Um, I continue to grow. I've been in the talent acquisition space for 30 years. I continue to grow. I've worked in every area of talent acquisition that you could imagine um, and quickly was in leadership. I, I think when I think about pivotal moments that led me to where I am, um, there were some decisions that I made under uh, along the way. And it's a 30-year career, so I could certainly talk about a lot of those decisions. Um but I think I'll, I'll talk about a few probably things that come top of mind. One, when I started in our industry back in the early 90s, I didn't see a lot of people of color, whether they uh, be male or female identifying. However, I didn't see a lot of diversity. But what I was lucky to have are a few um people that I saw that looked like me that had been successful in our industry who were very willing and gracious with their time uh, to take me under my, their wing. And um, so that certainly was a very, very key and critical part of me being successful. Um, I think Number two is part of the way I'm wired. I have a strong sense of work ethic. And in a world today where we like to talk a lot about work-life balance, which I am, quite frankly, I think is a bunch of BS. Um, I think work-life truth and work-life integration is more um, the story that we need to tell because we like to minimize the value of doing the work. We have to do the work. And I was willing to do the work to learn my industry. Um, I am a lifetime learner. Um, it is a strength of mine. I'm, I'm a, a believer in strengths. And so that curiosity, that desire to be the best that I could in my industry, to know everything about it, and the willingness to do the work was certainly part of the success. But then there came a pivot for me. I spent a lot of time in my early career trying to assimilate to what people thought successful people in corporations look like. And I got exhausted. And so, you know, we came to a time where I was in middle management. I remember making this phone call to my husband saying, I'm done. Like, I'm just done. I'm not going to do this anymore. Um, and it was after being passed over per for promotion that was given to a peer of mine, a white peer, without giving me access to interview or feedback as to why I wasn't prepared. Um, and, and that had happened more times than once. I, I had experienced quite a bit of systemic bias as I grew my career. And I was just tired of trying to be this pretzel and, and be and look like what everybody wanted me to be and speak to in hopes that I could climb this invisible ladder um, that I didn't seem to have access to. And so I went, I'm done. You know what? I'm going to show up the way I show up. I'm going to show up authentically. I'm going to show up with my own voice. I'm going to do the work that matters. I'm going to do it according to my standard. I'm in this industry to support other people in their careers. I love creating cultures um, with companies, and I'm going to do that and forget the latter. Um, and I tell that story because I believe it is when I 
truly decided to show up authentically and be focused and align and focus and align my career to be proud and purposeful and unapologetic to focus how I behaved in a work situation in accordance to my values that actually my career took off. And as my career took off and, and I had the opportunity to do some incredible things from um, you know, helping companies build more inclusive and equitable cultures to leading large global teams, um, I realized and, and changed the way we recruited and changed the way that we looked and assessed people to work with, for us because I believe in the multiple dimensions of diversity and the value that they bring. Um, and then all of a sudden I started getting recognized for building diverse cultures that then were connected to the business imperatives of retention, productivity, employee satisfaction. But more importantly than that, um, I remember the moment, the first moment someone came to me and said, Rocky, because you show up the way that you do, I now know that I can have a successful career and show up authentically too. And so that's what my career became about. And then in 2020, I think we were all very impacted by the pivot in the world between you know, a global pandemic, which none of us could have imagined seeing in our lifetime, and the social justice issues that became very prevalent. And for me, I have to tell you, while a lot of people were excited about the um, visibility that was given to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and belonging initially on the back of the death of George Floyd, I quite frankly was very angry because um, I, I was devastated, of course, by the death of George Floyd. But these types of incidents that have been happening in Black communities and happen in Black and Brown communities and any community, quite frankly, that's different. We look at the increase in uh, you know, transphobia and what the LGBTQ community is facing. We looked at what the Asian community faces. We look at what Black communities face. And I was just angry because it just seemed to me at the time that people had time on their hands and it would just, it was the, the thing, it was the cool thing to do at the moment to be enraged by this. But this is the life that we've all been living for quite some time if you don't fit into a very narrow view of acceptable acceptedness. It is, it is why we talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And then I have to ask myself a question, was I doing enough? Um, and made a purposeful pivot in my career. I believe that grown women pivot purposely. It's one of the principles of my platform and decided to focus on doing diversity work. And certainly the great culmination for that was when I met the CEO of the Mom Project, Allison Robinson, who is the most incredible human you'd meet. And I had long admired the work of the Mom Project. And when I met Allison, it was kind of professional love at first sight. And I knew that we could accomplish incredible things together. But again, when you talk about aligning values and purpose, I couldn't be more aligned to, from a personal values and purpose perspective to the work that the Mom Project is doing. Rocky, I love listening to you because it has so much power and every single part of your life has so much power. So thank you for all that incredible um, tale of your life. Rocky, what does a chief equity and impact officer do on a day to day basis? Can you explain that to us? Yeah, sure. So I think, you know, obviously titles vary across the organization, but what my role is, is obviously to work inside of the mom project to make sure that, you know, we strongly believe that we move forward when we move together. And so we want to create spaces where people feel um, like their voices are heard um, and that we've created a, a equitable and respectful culture for our employees. And then my impact changes because I spend time with our clients um, and 
helping them to understand how the mom project can be a strategic partner to help them with their diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging needs. And so I spent quite a bit of time speaking on the topics of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, and helping people realize the importance of aligning their business imperatives with human imperatives. And certainly a big part of everything that I do is advocating for the voices of the multiple dimensions of diversity and certainly within the, the context of the work that I do at the Mom Project, leading with the story of Mom. Rocky, and um, I understand that you are trying or your work is to support companies to really allow space for everybody. How do you do that? Yeah, that's more than we have time to discuss here. But what I will say to you is that um, for me, it's about helping companies really speak to how they move from, you know, good intentions to impact and how the mom project services can help them do that and actually be able to um, uh to be able to increase the representation of dual working moms and certainly dual working moms of color. Our platform, I think the last numbers I saw are is about, I'm gonna go with a lower number because I have a number in mind, but our platform is about 45% culturally diverse. And we have a platform of about 1.3 moms, dads and allies in our community. And so for me, it's about how do I connect those individuals with companies and it's about helping companies under, understand through the work that Work Labs does and through the work that Rise does, the needs of this particular population, whether we're speaking and advocating on behalf of expanding childcare programs or looking at flexible work situations or talking about remote work or talking about the reason that 2.5 million moms left the workplace and how do we get them back or looking at the future of work where we know by 2044 the majority will the minority quote unquote and I absolutely hate that word but for context the minority population will be the majority and our workplaces need to be prepared for the future of work and so how our ecosystem can help and support we want to do that with our client partners yeah amazing rocky it's so exciting rocky what is your main motivator would you say yeah i believe that you change the world one story one conversation one action at a time uh, I am a wife and mother of four, like I mentioned earlier, and, and a big part of my motivation is making sure that, that the world is a little bit better for my children and my children's children than it was here. I think secondarily, a big motivation for me is that I grew up um, and have multiple dimensions of my diversity and my intersectionality. And I know how difficult that made my journey. It shouldn't be so damn hard to go to work and be able to sh show up as you are and yeah. not have to hide and cover and assimilate, et cetera. Um, it shouldn't be so hard to be a dual working mom. Uh, it should be recognized that motherhood is the most important job. It baffles me that we don't recognize the skills that it takes to raise the next generation of humans. And, and yet and still, while we're providing our, you know, cor corporate, big corporate, next generation of workers they don't recognize the work that it's taking to do that yeah. and so those are some of the things that motivate me and ultimately um i want my family to be proud i'm into that rocky yes it, i it, i resonate with everything you just said rocky what would you say is your biggest quality contributing yeah. to all the success um, you know what? It's it's funny because we often talk about superpowers at the Mom Project, and we ask women to be very 
clear about what their superpowers are. Now you asked me what my superpower was and what contributed to my success. Again, I'm going to go back to, I'm an unapologetic God girl. And I, I think faith has a big part of that. Um, but I did this exercise probably about four or five years ago. And I asked my oldest daughter who specifically, who had had the opportunity, she and I've worked together in corporate and of course she's grown up as my daughter and I, I asked her what do you think my superpower is and her answer um, I think was spot on and she said you know what mom I've watched you do this in work and I've watched you do this at home and it is your ability to take nothing and turn it into something um, I like I don't like chaos so I'm a chaos eliminator I'm pretty gritty, I'm pretty resilient, I'm pretty tenacious. And I think I'm the person that when it's nothing or when it's messy, you give it to it and we'll turn it into something. Yes, thank you for that great answer, Rocky. Rocky, what tips would you give other women? Maybe the women, the moms who are out there sitting at home thinking, I have more to give. Yeah, um, I, I think first of all, stop apologizing. We do a lot of apologizing for, I'm sorry, I'm not this. I'm sorry, uh, I've been out of the workforce, etc. I want, uh, you know, women and I want moms to be bold and brilliant and badass and own their superpowers and own their stories and to stop apologizing. Um, I think be clear about the value that you bring and be able to tell that story. Because here's the tough thing is someone who, you know, has grown up being a recruiter. If you don't know your value, I, I don't know it. And so you've got to stop over indexing on humility and be able to tell your own story. And, and then I think it's about being patient, purposefully patient and, looking for those organizations that are aligned to your values and your goals and and trying very best. I mean, I, I again, I recognize that there's a privilege that sits there, but to try your best to align no matter what you do and find companies that are aligned with who you are, because that's when you will find success. Yes. Thank you, Rocky. It's excellent advice. Rocky, plans and dreams, goals, what are your goals? What are you, which direction are you heading in? Yeah, you know what? I think I'm exactly where I want to be. Um, and that will manifest itself in multiple ways, right? But for me, it's all about being a, a bold advocate for voices who aren't often heard in multiple dimensions of diversity. And I will continue to do that in, in diverse ways. So what I would say is stay tuned. Thank you so much, Rocky, for talking to me today. This was a really inspiring conversation. Oh, Stephanie, thank you so much for me. And thank you so much for being bold and brilliant and badass and telling the world that she can. Thank you.